Hello, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed the short but very intensive coffee break. I would be happy to continue with the next session. And you know we have talked already about we have plenty of outputs, outcomes. We are creating impact, but now in the next section, section we want to talk about the future and about sustainability. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce again Dolores Cavier-Vidin. You know, she was the deputy head or is the deputy head of work package to dealing with sustainability. And she was already introduced, so I keep it short, but she will now tell us more about the strategic research and innovation agenda. And the floor is yours, Dolores. Thank you very much, Anna-Marie. Yeah, um, the work on the strategic research and innovation agenda was a big team effort with plenty of collaborations from many of you sitting in this room here and others as well. So my big thanks to all of you. Um, at the early stages planning how this document would look like, we decided that we wanted to have something short and concise. However, that plenty of additional information could be reached by links. So it's a sort of interactive document where there are very many topics that are addressed, but each topic is just a description in a paragraph or so, and then plenty of links with either sources or additional information. So um, it's a very good format which helped us to reduce this to about uh, 100 pages. Oops. Um, this is a strategy document for the sustainability of the One Health HIP, as the main aim was towards a collaborative and coordinated multidisciplinary network where the surveillance, laboratory procedures, risk assessment methodologies, interventions approaches are aligned across sectors and borders, maximizing the health of animals, humans, and the environment. So you see, we have all the components in this <laughs> aim, really. Uh, and this is what One Health is about and One Health EJP is about. So uh, we have a long introduction with three parts, the past, the present, and the future. In the past, then, we describe the background and the context of the One Health EJP and the main objective at the start of the program, which was to enhance the prevention, detection, and control of zoonosis and antimicrobial resistance. Prevent, detect, respond. In the past, then, description of the past, we address all these different topics, threat of zoonosis and AMR, uh, the approach to prevention, detection, and control, the role of the MedVetNet Association already at the initial stages of the One Health HIP, our goals, the vision towards a shared landscape, the overarching ambition creating a sustainable European framework, which was um, really uh, achieved, and it's uh, really a big um, achievement that so many different countries in Europe and so many participants are part of the One Health HIP. Um, outputs and outcomes already uh, in the description of the past, what we wanted to then to produce. The network itself has been mentioned many times now that the network itself is probably the or one of the most important outcomes of the One Health HIP. And that was very well planned from the very beginning and the dissemination of the outcomes. Um, of course, we built on the strategic research agenda, which was already discussed yesterday, which shows, among other things, six specific objectives. I will go through that uh, in a minute. Um, then we've moved into the present. We look at current challenges and opportunities, for example, looking at policy, and we see these um, European then uh, challenges and opportunities and developments like the big uh, European strategies, European uh, authorities like the HERA, uh, European initiatives, but also the need of the international collaboration and our then relation to those international collaborations, many of them then part of the stakeholder committee, um, or all of them. UN Environment, World Organization for Animal Health, the old OIE, 
and WHO and FAO. Um, and I think that this is also something to think into the future. Uh, we have focused, obviously, on Europe because uh, resources are limited, but Europe is not isolated uh, in the world, and these global challenges need to be addressed, really, in an international perspective. In the present, we look at the environmental pillar of One Health and policy. Then we go through the COVID pandemic and the One Health approach and preparedness against possible pandemics, and then we moved into food safety and security and the state of art on One Health science and technology, looked into society, and then the progress and challenges of the One Health EJP. The introduction now deals with the future, the actual needs of the stakeholders. The graph you see there, these are uh, Google searches that shows a trend, an upwards trend from 2014 to 2022 on the searches for words zoonosis and One Health, looking that society is becoming more aware and interested. In the future, we address citizen priorities, policy needs, and also globalization and international cooperation. Uh, we look at other uh, important topics into the future, environment ecosystems and wildlife health, climate change, AMR in the environment, one health approaches to tackle AMR. Many more topics about the future. I don't need to read them all, but uh, you can recognize this yourself. You see what's happening, what is going, the way we go, what's waiting for us. Um, Again, the need of harmonizing methods and data between sectors, how animal welfare and human human interrelationships uh, are becoming more and more important, how important it is to share information also with the public and from science to policy, uh, and the other way around. We have a section dedicated to objectives, where the objectives uh, already given in the strategic research agenda were developed and updated then to, that, to today's situation. So the objectives in the agenda deal with the bringing together the European scientific community, objective two, implement the scientific projects, and three, the joint research projects, and four, deal with harmonization and standardization. And five, with the um, national and international stakeholders, communication and exchange. And six, then, to training, education and communication. We identified a number of additional objectives. For example, a conceptual and operational framework for the role of the environment, uh, the role of global warming on, epidemiological, biolo on the epidemiology of biological hazards, preparedness for future pandemics, food safety, food security, sustainable food systems, the role of changing techniques on animal production and other objectives are addressing this agenda. Um, the One Health EJP addresses the UN Sustainable Development Goals and we are proud for this. Um, oops, that went too fast. Um, we believe that we are very really identified in our work with the goal on partnerships for the goals. And uh, for example, in the task, in the key target, 17.6, to collaborate and share knowledge about science, technology, and innovation. But we are highly connected and collaborate, have ho hopefully collaborated then to other goals, good health and well-being, for example, with key targets to strengthen capacity, early warning, risk reduction, and management of national and global health risks. Uh, we have worked towards zero hunger uh, and other goals, as you can see here. Uh, we have a section of the agenda dedicated to the expected impacts um, by the um, the impacts themselves, the type of impacts, and then the relation to the different areas as society, science and technology, policy and economy. But we want to really to point out that these are the impacts that we believe we have achieved and we want to continue and sustain into the future. We have uh, two separate chapters, I mean separate because they take a large part in the agenda because they're very important, one on AMR and one on One Health, and we had separate working groups or modules to prepare these chapters. Here we have uh, one example on the AMR. Um, 
a long, long table. It was a very good work. And a long table is provided then as an annex in the agenda. And that is something that is very special with this work of this module was the interaction that we have had even with scientists outside the One Health um, EJP. For example, in this case, the table deals with therapeutics, diagnostics, surveillance, transmission, environment, uh, and was uh, put together by scientists from the Joint Programming Initiative, AMR, and even scientists working in the development of the program for the One Health, uh, the European Partnership of Animal Health and Welfare. So this, uh, this collaboration, even outside the consortium of the One Health EJP, has been very, very important for us to develop our strategic research and innovation agenda. Finally, we get to the sustainability plan. We aim to guide and to recommend actions that will result in maintaining major outcomes of the One Health EJP because we want these benefits to persist in the future. In the, so to, to develop this plan, we looked at the key instruments for the sustainability. What are the instruments, the tools? What can we use? What do we have that will help us to sustain um, some or many of the outcomes? And we have different tools and different outcomes. And I think that the key to sustainability is a combination of the very many different um, strategies and different methods, because there is no one, one initiative that will be able to sustain the whole One Health EJP. But the combination of many of them then will achieve the, sustain, the sustain, sustainability of many of the outcomes. Um, we do have the means, we have the European partnerships, for example. Um, we have other One Health initiatives which have been already been mentioned, like the, the global the One Health High Level Expert Panel. Uh, there is funding within the European Union. Um, we summarize the types of fundings that are available and give the links to the information. Funding also for development and innovation and for networking and training. And there are a number of dissemination instruments that can also be used. So this is how but what? What do we want to sustain? Well, ideally everything, but there is no One Health EJP version 2, so that we have focused on a, a selection of outcomes, activities, and actions. This has also been presented before, but from each project, both integrative and research project, we have extracted uh, or prioritized outcomes that we think are particularly important to sustain into the future. And there are many more, of course, that are also important. But these outcomes have been identified. And finally, the sustainability plan shows then what outcome then we think is very important to sustain in the future, how we think that that outcome can be sustained, and the timeline, the time perspective. Is it ongoing already now? Is it to be initiated in the future? Is it in the long term or, to, or only for the uh, next few couple of years or so? For example, we think that the One Health EJP network, a large part of it can be sustained through the MedvedNet Association. And this is one of, of the key instruments that we have for the sustainability of the One Health EJP. But there are many others, as you can see here, and you can see directly in the agenda. I not, don't want to use too much time to go to all the details, but um, there is um, a table showing the sustainability plan, a long table. And finally, the dissemination, which is, of course, very, very important. What are the areas for dissemination? What is the dissemination sustainability and the target audiences? All this has been identified by the communications team, and this plan is presented also in the strategic research and innovation agenda. And with this, I want to take just one minute, please, <laughs> to thank very warmly to all of you in the One Health EJP and all of you interested on the One Health EJP. I have a very special thanks to Arnaud and to Hein for the fantastic work that you have done. Uh, but to each and all of you, this uh, has meant a lot for me.
I started a bit late, a pity I didn't get in there earlier, but I'm very grateful for the time that I participated then at the One Health HIP. This has been a very nice development for, for my own uh, way of thinking, a way of working, and uh, I'm very proud of being part of this consortium. So thank you to all of you. Thank you very much, Dolores, for this very clear presentation, also for coordinating to bring together all these different elements to this great document. And also I say thank you to the communications team, which helped us very much to bring it up to a very nice brochure. So really, I can recommend to everybody, have a look on the um, document.